Hi, and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. Nan to Tetris. Today, we're going to talk about building a computer, and in particular, the arithmetic chips that we're going to need for that computer. But to talk about binary arithmetic, first we're going to have to talk about decimal arithmetic. Consider the number 609. In decimal, what does it really represent? Well, it's 6 times 10 to the second, plus 0 times 10 to the first, plus 9 times 10 to the zero. Or 6 times 100, plus 0 times 10, plus 9 times 1. 600 plus 0 plus 9 is 609. Binary arithmetic is the same, only instead of working in base 10, we're working in base 2. So 1 times 2 to the 4th plus 0 times 2 to the 3rd plus 1 times 2 to the 2nd plus 1 times 2 to the 1st plus 1 times 2 to the 0. 16 plus 0 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. That's 23. We don't, however, have a negative sign in binary. So how do we represent negative numbers? Well, the first thing is, if we've used all the bits for the unsigned numbers, then we can't have negative numbers. To get around this, we think of a system called two's complement. This was first proposed by John von Neumann in his first draft of a report on the EDVAC computer. One simple way to think of two's complement is that the sum of an n-bit number and its two's complement is two to the n. Let's see how this looks in practice. Think back to our example of binary 23. If we only have five bits, we can't actually take the two's complement of this number because it's using the most significant bit, which is needed by the negative numbers. So let's add a leading zero and say we're treating this as a six-bit number. It still represents 23. Two to the six in binary is a one followed by six zeros. We're gonna keep this number in mind, but note that this actually requires seven bits to represent. So this number won't actually fit in a six bit system. So we have our 23 and we want to find negative 23. We flip each bit and then add one. If we were to add these two six bit numbers together using normal binary addition without worrying about overflow, we would end up with that 7-bit number. But effectively, what has actually happened is we found the 2's complement of our original number. So what we're looking at here is 23 plus negative 23, which equals 0. The main advantage of 2's complement is that it allows us to treat addition of negative numbers just like we treat addition of positive numbers. 2's complement can be a little tricky to wrap your head around, so don't be afraid to reread the materials. If you're still confused, do some exercises to convince yourself that the math actually works. Using your newfound knowledge of two's complement, this week you've got some fun assignments. You're going to implement a number of different adders and then an arithmetic logic unit. First, you're going to work on a half adder. Then, you're going to make a full adder that can deal with carrying and overflow. You're going to chain those full adders into a 16-bit adder and then you're going to make an incrementer, which will add 1 to a 16-bit number. Finally, you're going to build an arithmetic logic unit. So here's some advice on how to get started on each chip. For the half adder, look at its truth tables. What basic gates could you use to implement parts of that table? For the full adder, just take two half adders and one basic gate, figuring out what order to wire up the outputs is the tricky bit here. The 16-bit adder, you can use full adders chained together and think about how to propagate the carry bit. The incrementer should be trivial once you have the 16-bit adder, because one, after all, is a 16-bit number. Lastly, the ALU. This one is the monster. Think about the ordering of how the ALU's various control bits affect the X and Y inputs. The table describing those control bits in the book is going to be your best friend here. Some of those control bits change the values before they're added. Some of those control bits change them after. Stay calm and build it a piece at a time. Good luck, folks. This is your first really big challenge. I want to encourage you to ask questions in the comments below. And also, if you're able to, answer questions asked by other people doing the exercises.
This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching.